I'm Felix Kunz. This is part three of my what's in your camera slash kit bag video series. I've covered my camera bag and my laptop bag so far. So go watch those videos first. And this is my kit bag. The fourth bag I have is coming after this is a um, backdrop bag. I'll show you guys how I break that down. So this has got my lights in it. I just wanted to run you through it real quick about the little things, bits and bobs that I do. If, if you watched my lighting series, especially the layered light setup, if you go to thelightingseries.com, you'll find that. You know that I use this thing called Cinefoil. So I always have a couple of sheets of Cinefoil in my front pocket. They're super reusable. And if you watch the lighting series, I'll explain what that's for. It's great for shaping light. So that's what's in this front pocket here. And then I have in this top pocket, and I like having things in the same pocket so I always know where they're from. I'm gonna make a separate video about how I mount gels on my modifiers, but I have a pack of, this is a very fancy bag, full of um, Ziploc bags of different gels in different strengths. ND gels, frost gels, CTO, CTB, which is color temperature orange, color temperature blue, various effect gels, and I have them cut in the shape that I need to for my various modifiers. So there's a whole set of these that I always carry with me in this bag. And put that over here. So that's what's in the lid, always goes there so I know what it is. I'm gonna run you through what I have in the top of this lid and then I'll put the bag over on the side and start unpacking it for you guys. I have my tether cable. Now, Nikon makes a little adapter. If you can see that here, this comes in the bag with the D810 for sure, maybe with other cameras too, with their USB cable, which is quite short. And I use an extension and then I have a USB-C adapter on here that's always attached so I can use it with my new MacBook Pro. Um, this is better than any tether blocker or tether stopper I've ever used. It just attaches to the camera and it sticks there. There's nothing, it never comes off. I never have a problem with tethering. So that's my tether cable. I usually also carry a spare in here. I'm going to South Africa on this trip. So I have three South African adapters and a couple of multi plugs that, you know, when you travel, you only need one adapter and then you can just go to a multi plug and suddenly you've got three plugs with one adapter. So that's what I do. Of course, another set of AA batteries. You can never have enough of those. And my Leatherman multi-tool, which I use all the time. All right, let me walk you through what's in the rest of the bag. I'm just gonna move this over here. I'm wearing my AirPods or AirPod because I wanna, I'm using it to record audio for you guys. Otherwise it sounds so terrible. So. I have my DJI Osmo Mobile. I use it with my iPhone 10 to record buttery smooth video for behind the scenes, etc. That's in here. Travel with a bunch of A clamps. These are super useful on set. And honestly, when I'm staying at a hotel or somewhere, these always come in handy for all sorts of things. I can flip things onto, um, you know, hang up towels and those kind of thing. I usually, I like to carry my own tripod head. If I have the weight allowance, I use the Manfrotto 425, I believe it is. It's my favorite tripod head, but this one is just a ball head. And I can always find a tripod when I go travel with photographers I know in the area or borrowing or even buying a cheap one at a camera store. But tripod heads don't aren't that easy to find, so I like to travel with mine. This is my bullet gun grip. Uh, this is the 327RC2 by Manfrotto, and um, the ball head is really useful. Then I have, okay, let's talk about lights. I use these ELB400 battery packs, which if you watch the camera uh, laptop bag video, that's where my batteries are. I can't check the batteries into luggage. Airlines get upset about that. But I have two of these that I travel with so I can do my lighting. And I have two action heads for those as well. They're little heads and they mount into my um, Ellen Chrome lights. I use this reflector dish mostly to protect the lights when I'm traveling because they go into this little, um, you know, they have that little um, cover on it. So 
that they don't get damaged while I'm traveling. Now, you'll notice, so I have two of those. I don't use a Pelican case or have any kind of foam cutouts for these. Now, the reason for that, same with my camera, I don't use Pelican cases at all. The reason is they add so much weight to my luggage. I would rather be able to carry more in less luggage. That's what I, the first priority for what I'm looking for. What I do is this bag has about half the space still empty. That's the space I stuff with my clothes and my, you know, all my personal items. I'm not going to run you through. I'm not going to show you what I pack as my clothes. And um, I pack them really tightly around the lights and everything. And that's what protects them. And I've never had anything break while I'm traveling. I have my Ellen Chrome battery charger. I put blue tape on my things just because that kind of denotes that it's mine. This is for charging my batteries. Then I have a big reflector dish. This I have just in case I need to recreate sunlight on a shoot. I can put a orange gel over the front of this and this is quite a nice hard light on one of my heads. Then I have two of these. Uh, this is the long Ellen Chrome cable. This connects from the pack to the head. They make a shorter version and a longer version. And I take the longer versions when I travel. They're heavier, but I'm always using, you know, I want to be able to have flexibility. Then I have Pro Photo Ellen Chrome to Pro Photo for the Ellen Chrome lights, Pro Photo adapters. Sometimes when I'm on look, um, traveling, people locally will have Pro Photo equipment that I can borrow. So this allows me to use Pro Photo equipment, Pro Photo lights with my Ellen Chrome modifiers. So I always bring a couple of speed rings for that. Then the Ellen Chrome, these heads, they don't fit in the standard Ellen Chrome mount because they're the mobile heads, the action heads. So you have a, a speed ring that is an adapter from this size of head to the larger Ellen Chrome mount. I'm going to make a separate video of what you need to put an Ellen Chrome uh, modifier together with these uh, lights. Then I have, I get asked this all the time, what is the clamp you're using to hold up your backdrop? This is called a Cardellini clamp. This is, I clamp it onto the middle and top of my Oliphant backdrops and, that, and then attach it to a C-stand arm, which I'll show you in the next video. And that's how I mount my um, Oliphant backdrops, super elegant. Then I always carry a super clamp, which is a clamp that's very versatile with a hook. So I could attach that to the bottom of a stand and hang a sandbag off of this to weigh the stand down, or I can attach this somewhere and hang this pack off of here. It's very versatile. I use it for all sorts of things, and um, I always carry that just in case. That's called a super clamp and a J-hook. So believe it or not, I won this uh, Think Tank Logistics Manager at a raffle at Adorama in New York when they opened their pro department, and I've been using it ever since. I've beaten this thing up. It's really one of my favorite bags. So if you've enjoyed this video, if you found it interesting, go ahead and subscribe and go ahead and watch the previous videos if you haven't done that or the next video on my backdrop bag and the things I put in there.